So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I don't think wireless charging on the new iPhones is really that great. But my disdain for Qi charging has slightly improved after I started using the Pataka Mag Case Pro and the regular Pataka. Why? Because magnetic car mounts are way better than normal car mounts and having the wireless charging capability is really just the cherry on top of my car mount Sunday. In general, I do like both Pataka cases, but I do feel that the Mag Mount Qi needs a bit more work as it's missing a few important things, like a power cable. If you're looking for a minimalist case but don't want a skin or a cheap TPU case, get the regular Mag case. If you want something tougher with a bit more texture, consider getting the Mag Case Pro if you're in the market for a tough case. I think this would make a great alternative to the Rhino Shield Solid Suit or the Mouse Limitless. In the next few minutes, I'm going to review the cases, talk about why Qi charging my car sucks, review the Meg Mount Qi, and then tell you why all these Pataka products makes doing things in my car less sucky. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, eh? .ca. I had a dream last night that I was running a YouTube channel that made videos based on actual usage and then there was this dog with me and he and I would do these funny things in these YouTube videos in order to make sure that people don't waste their money on bad products. Sound familiar? The mag case is made primarily from aramid fiber which is basically the base material for Kevlar. This means the mag case is thin and light while offering the same level of durability as steel. That's what the marketing fluff says anyways. The mag case fits the iPhone very well though parts of the case don't conform to Apple's case design specifications. If you want to know what Apple thinks the perfect case should be, check out that video that I did on that. The overall texture of the case is quite nice and gives your slick iPhone 10 a little bit of extra texture that isn't too abrasive. The back of the case isn't going to slide around on a flat surface, but the front edges are quite low, so I definitely recommend using the free screen protector that comes with this case. I don't really think it's free since, well, this tiny case costs 50 bucks, while the big case costs, well, 50 bucks as well. Now, when it comes to general wear and tear, the case does show fingerprints easily, and despite being marketed as having a highly scratch-resistant back, something with the hardness of 3H, like my favorite rock, will still leave visible marks on the case. The entire product is covered in a soft rubber coating, which Pataka calls Baby Soft. And as a side note, I've got a baby, and baby feels way softer than the Pataka case. If you're looking for an alternative to the regular mag case, do check out the cork cases from 1521. They're as thin, as unique, and I kind of like the cool look of the cork. The Mag Case Pro is completely different than the regular Mag Case. I would say that this is more of a traditional iPhone case because it's made from several layers, such as foam, TPU frames and microfiber cloths. Aramid isn't as prevalent on this case as it only exists in the back. So, you know, it's much more like a visual accent than anything else. Overall, the build quality of this Mac Case Pro is spectacular. Pataka seems to have a very tight control over their manufacturing process as the seams between the TPU pieces are quite smooth. The difference is very noticeable when you compare the Mac Case Pro to this really crappy Elixir case, which they went and bought for $3 and they're trying to sell it for $30. On the brutal ripoff, you could definitely see where the TPU pieces meet, whereas on the Mac Case Pro, you kind of can't. Now, with that being said, this is 50 bucks, so it better be that smooth. Now, if your iPhone could think for itself or, you know, convey its feelings, it would be very grateful for the foam back and microfiber back. It's very, very spongy. Now, I never really understood why manufacturers place microfiber on the back. They do say it prevents scratches, but regardless of the material, if dust and debris are getting in between your case and the iPhone, it's going to get scratched regardless if it's just regular TPU. Or microfiber. The iPhone has enough texture on the front and the back of the case so it doesn't slide around easily. The edges of the case have, well, these ridges on them that definitely improves the grip of the case. The Aramid back doesn't show fingerprints as easily as the mag case and will hold up better over time as the back of the case is raised. These little nubbins on the back of this case apparently improve the drop protection of this product as well. Now, despite all the bulk, the Mag Case Pro is quite light as it weighs only 38 grams, which is just a tad heavier than the Rhino Shield Solid Suit and definitely lighter than the Mouse Limitless. So you get a lot of extra protection for not a lot of extra bulk. When it comes to accessing your iPhone, the regular Mag Case doesn't have any button covers, so well, it's like using a naked iPhone. The bottom is fully exposed, so use whatever third-party cable you want. For the Mag Case Pro, the iPhone's buttons are easily reached through the case. They have a nice response to them and do come close to the feel of the iPhone inside, something similar to a catalyst impact protection, we'll say, and it's definitely not as mushy 
as the most limitless. When it comes to functionality to the standard feature of both Pataka cases are the tiny magnets that they've embedded along the inside of the case. They're kind of laid out in this manner that well, obviously doesn't interfere with the Qi charging functionality of the iPhone. I will note that magnets aren't as strong as traditional magnetic cases with the massive magnets on the back, but are strong enough to keep the iPhone from sliding around while driving. When you're using the Pataka mount, you might be able to get away using a different magnetic car mount, but it just doesn't feel as stable as the Pataka branded mounts. And if you're wondering if the magnetic backs mess with your iPhone's internals, well, it doesn't show up on the compass at least. So if you're finding this video helpful or useful, or you just want to plain support me with what I do, uh, consider getting all your stuff, or you should get all your stuff through my Amazon links because it doesn't cost you anymore and you'll be basically paying for future videos. These longer videos, especially stuff with car uh, and car mounts and whatnot, take a lot longer to uh, film. If you pay attention to some of the product shots that I do, I've actually got the time uh, on my iPhone and it's, I think I've been filming this video straight, not straight, on and off for about five days now. So it's taken a bit of, it takes a bit of effort to finish these freaking video sometimes. Um, this one's particularly been frustrating. But again, any sort of support you guys can give me, uh, share, a like, um, is greatly appreciated. So I'm gonna go drive home. Oh look, Porto Pot, that's grody. The biggest difference between these two products is the protection. The Mad Case Pro is apparently three times drop rated, whereas in the regular Mad Case, offers protection that rivals several layers of paper towel. If you're not terrible with your iPhone and just need something to prevent excessive scratching on your device, go with the Mad Case. This is my go-to minimalistic case as it removes my biggest complaint about the new iPhones, which is the handling of the device due to the well, fact that it's made of glass. Just make sure that you put on the free screen protector because the edges of the case are extremely low. The top and bottom of the case well, don't even have edges. The Mad Case and Mad Case Pro do have raged edges for the camera, which is great. Pataka calls this feature Feature, the extra protective ring for your camera lens. At the end of the day, I wouldn't go around dropping my iPhone on purpose with the regular Mag case. It's just one of those products that you know will protect your device. You just don't know by how much so when your iPhone does fall, you'll end up standing over it for a few seconds with your eyes squinting going, please, 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 oh, I hope it's not broken. Onto the Mac Case Pro, which is definitely a tough case. It has five layers of protection, which sounds great until you realize that one of those layers is the microfiber cloth. Now, when it comes to drops, Pataka employs the usual air pockets in the corners of the case. Uh, I do like the description of the corners as they use the word airbag. The side of the case also has a series of air pockets, which helps with the impact protection of edge drops. There are oversized corners on the Mac Case Pro, and this will definitely add to the protection of the products, and they will also improve the handling of the device in your hand. Now, all these features allow Pataka to say that it provides three times the drop protection, but they don't say if it's three times the drop height or if they dropped it three times the normal amount. So, you know, three times 26, 77, eight. Now, from my experience in dropping iPhone cases, I know that my iPhone 10 is going to be fine when it comes to corner drops in the Mac Case Pro. I'm not confident when it comes to face first drops because the case edges are quite pliable. They come off quite easily. What happens when the iPhone hits a surface relatively face first, the corner is going to absorb the initial impact. But if it's too flexible, it's going to pop off the iPhone. And the only thing that's stopping the iPhone from breaking is going to be your pseudo tears, nah, which means it's going to break. If you take a look at the most limitless, the corners are incredibly rigid. The limitless is definitely going to offer decent face protection, whereas in this uh, Pataka product, yeah. So why do I think Qi charging in my car sucks? First of all, Qi charging for the iPhone generally isn't great. I've done a full video on the 7.5 watt Qi charging, and if you're wondering if it's worth the hype, well, I recommend you check out that video. Second of all, uh, I generally find that the average car mount to be large and clunky. Car designers spend a lot of time drawing out the curves of your car dash, and then we kind of ruin all by placing this giant piece of plastic with these tiny little arms on it. With the magnetic mounts, the setup is kind of, it's less of an eyesore, and the general premise of the magnetic mounts means that they're just so much easier to use. Car Qi chargers aren't any better, and they're actually larger and clunkier. For example, this IOTI charger requires to loudly clamp your iPhone in place. This Jindo smart charger requires to wait while the unit wears the arms into place. Or you could definitely play tug of war with this Empow product. It looks like I'm filming the arm extension in slow motion, but it's I'm not. That's just kind of how slow the arms come out. Honestly, there's a good chance that plugging your iPhone into a 2.4 amp cigarette charger is going to provide a faster charge than plugging it into the corresponding Qi charger. Now with that off my 
hairless chest. Using the Meg Mount Chi has changed my opinion slightly because it makes the entire Qi charging experience in my car relatively annoyance free. The Mag Mount Qi is a slightly evolved vent mount as the entire surface of the mount is much larger than your average magnetic mount. Pataka offers two other mounting methods, a suction cup and a CD slot. I personally prefer the suction cup as I don't like having my vents blocked, especially during the winter time and during the summertime, and basically any other time of the year. You can mount your iPhone in any orientation you like, but the magnets only fit one way so you can't switch between landscape and portrait on the fly. Now there are a couple of downsides to this mount. The first thing is that it doesn't come with a cable. Seriously, I've literally got hundreds of micro USB cables because companies just toss them into products like how doctors generally prescribe ibuprofen. If the patient needs ibuprofen, they'd open their mouth and the doctor just throws a handful of pills at them and then whatever sticks in their mouth is basically the dosage that they need. For micro USB cables, if the product needs it, the manufacturer will basically open up the box and they'll throw a bunch of these cables into the box and whatever ends up in the box is what you need. Now Pataka decided not to do any of this and decided to go with the cheap route. The next downside is the mag mount chi doesn't even come with a power supply. That's right, you need to buy a cable and the power source. Now the solution to that problem is simple as all you got to do is just buy a cigarette car adapter or if you have an AC converter for your car you can use that instead. I guess that plugs into the cigarette adapter as well. Or if you've got a spare battery power source you could plug that into the Qi charger which seems like a very bad use of whatever you have. When it comes to charge speed with the Mag Mount Qi, with a 2.4 amp cigarette adapter, it is faster than the stock 5 watt Qi charger, but it is 30 minutes slower than the 7.5 watt Qi charger. And when you compare this product to wired options, it is definitely way slower. So Qi charging in your car generally gets better the longer you drive. For me personally, I drive, I don't usually drive more than 15 minutes at a time. So with the Mag Mount Qi, that gets me an extra 6% of battery power. That's way slower than the three minutes it would take to get the 6% with an Apple 29 watt fast charge. The last thing I will say about the Magnum Chi is that it isn't WPC certified, which means it might damage whatever device it is charging. Now this may seem alarming, but a lot of the Qi chargers that I've seen and have aren't actually WPC certified. Now, if you can look beyond all these shortcomings with the uh, charger, you're gonna find that the Pataka cases and the corresponding Qi mounts work incredibly well because of just how simple it makes using your iPhone charging your iPhone in your car. You get in your car and you plop your phone on the pad and then it starts charging. There isn't any finagling to see if my iPhone is set in place. iPhone accessories, again, should make your life, my life easier if Pataka has done that with their cases and Qi mounts. If you do plan on helping me out, consider getting all your stuff through my Amazon links because that's basically the only way well, I make money off of these videos. So that's all I got. If you have questions or comments, I would like to know what other magnetic Qi mounts you guys have been using. Uh, so leave that in the comments section below. I'm maybe going to buy a few more. They're getting kind of pricey for me to get. Uh, but I do want to do a big roundup review for our car chi mounts. Uh, so let me know. If you have any questions or comments, well, leave them down there. That's kind of all I got. Right, puppy? We're done.